Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. Well today we're looking at an, at an Olympus lens and it is the Olympus 7-14 Pro f2.8 lens. It's a constant f2.8 aperture and, and here it is, the f2.8 uh, 7-14 Pro lens. I've actually got it fitted to my OMD EM1 Mark III and that makes a great combination there. That is really compact, um, it's not heavy. Um, the lens itself is one of the heavier lenses within the Olympus range, but it isn't incredibly heavy and it's quite compact on this particular body. And that is really, really good with micro four thirds. You can carry more lenses with you, um, or if you only want to take one or two lenses with you, you can do that quite happily. That will fit in a nice small camera bag without any problem whatsoever. Now. 7 to 14 in full frame turns is basically 14 to 28. You basically double it. So um, you've got ultra wide to wide angle uh, in this one lens. And it's a really, really lovely lens. I'm going to go through some of the images with you on my, uh, some test shots I've done on my computer. They will be uploaded to my Flickr page. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find them on Flickr. It's much easier to view them there than it is on my YouTube channel because of the compression of YouTube and it saves you having to pause the video and so on and so forth. So take a look at them on Flickr. They will be there. Um, but for now, here is the lens. Now, lovely, lovely construction, beautifully made. All the pro lenses, well, pretty much every Olympus lens, but all the pro lenses are very, very well made, uh, weather sealed. And as I say, it's got a constant f2.8 aperture. So you've got no, certainly great for video and great for stills because you've got that wide aperture for low light situations. Great for landscapes, architecture, and all that kind of thing you might want to do with a wide angle lens. Um, and quite a nice lens, so nothing clever about the lens, um, but uh, unfortunately, it's got a, a built in uh, lens hood uh, not lens hood, lens cap, but it's got a built in lens hood um, which isn't replace, uh, removable because the lens does bulge out, so you can't put filters on it. So it's not a sort of lens you can put the traditional filters on, you'd have to find another way of modifying it maybe i don't know maybe companies like lee filters might make an adapter you can fit on the front but i don't use filters anyway so that didn't worry me at all now with the focus this is an, this is great with all the olympus pro lenses um it's got a clutch for going into manual focus so you just pull that backwards i don't know how clear that is to see um so forward is your auto focus and then pull it back and you're into manual focus and it shows you the actual guide on the uh, lens there of where you are focusing. It's got that lovely, beautiful manual focus uh, control. And with the Olympus cameras, particularly with the uh, OMD EM1 Mark II, the Mark III, the OM10 Mark IV, and even with my Pen F, um, manually focusing on an Olympus body is great because you can just tap in to magnify the focus. It's got focus peaking. So these features are fantastic. And I wish, you know, most manufacturers or every manufacturer would have like a clutch system on their cameras because I find that is so great. There's no fumbling around with buttons. Um, you just literally autofocus, manual focus. The only slight drawback with that as i have found come across a couple of times um if you've been manually focusing and then you pick it up to take some photographs you forget you're in manual focus you might be thinking god why isn't it focusing what's wrong with it uh, it's because you're in manual focus if you're trying to use autofocus so you know a very very slight drawback but i mean um you get used to that it's not a, it's not really an issue uh, now the zooming on this lens is in all internal so it doesn't affect the um uh, the size of a lens it doesn't you know zoom in and out it doesn't trombone so uh, all internal uh, focusing on there which is fantastic and on the side here you have got a function button on the side there so you can actually pre-assign that using the camera body to whatever you want that function button to do. Um, you can't adjust it to changing a lot of things, but I've got mine set up for the ISO. So um, if I'm out taking photographs, I can just push that button in and it will bring up the ISO range. I can just use the dial on the back here. 
to adjust the ISO. Do that again. And then that'll adjust the ISO according to what I might want. Generally speaking, I leave it set to auto ISO. But um, you can actually set it to manual ISO, and that's great. A flick of a button, and you're straight into your ISO settings. And I found, find that, again, very, very useful. Um, micro Four Thirds lens, so it fit on pretty much, well, not pretty much, any of the Micro Four Thirds bodies, even including your Black Magic cameras, your Panasonics, your Olympuses, uh, so on and so forth. There is no image stabilization built into the lens. Uh, you're reliant on the image stabilization in the camera body. Um, again, the Olympus bodies, which is these lenses are designed for, have got in body image stabilization, um, five axis image stabilization. So you're not going to worry about that. You can really take you know, photographs at really, really slow shutter speeds uh, with this lens. And it's just got a great feel to it. Edge to edge sharpness is great, even at its widest aperture of f2.8. So you're not going to be be concerned about the sharpness of uh, what this lens produces and as I say you can have a look at these images and if you take a closer look at them on Flickr and you can really see what I mean why I really like this lens um, and you know what a great lens it is um, it is you know uh, heavier than the Panasonic 7 to 14 and it's certainly a lot bigger and heavier than the Olympus 9 to 18 but that particular lens isn't a pro lens. This one is a pro lens um, and it will give you pro results. So, you know, if we just have a quick look at a few of these images that I've taken, um, nothing special, most of them out in the garden. You can see there straight away how sharp that is without me even having to blow it up. Um, but you get incredible detail, incredible sharpness on that lens once the computer loads the image. Um, lovely colours and the contrast really contrasty lens as well it's not a dull flat lens you know um, again great images and the distortion even the, uh, the seven mil is and look at brickwork that brickwork is so sharp and um, the distortion it ha it's handling with distortion really really well pretty much no chromatic aberration really really good from that point of view um, and again, great for architecture because it just gives that lovely feel to it. A really, really nice look to an architectural image. Um, again, everything is just so sharp. It is really, really good. Um, again, you look at that. Look at the detail in that bark. It's just so, so good. These are all been shot at f2.8. And that's, you know, again, sharpness is great. Now, that's a naff image. Um, uh, the image isn't great anyway, but look at that sky. It's really bad. We can actually do a sky replacement. Um, I do recommend another bit of software. I recommend it all the time. It's a great bit of software. And I'm going to edit this image very, very quickly in the other bit of software by replacing the sky. And the software I'm talking about is Luminar Neo. I will put in the description a link to where you can download trial versions of Luminar Neo. Highly recommend that you do, even if you don't buy it. Play with the trial version. It don't cost you anything. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's a really, really good bit of software. And it's really, really good value. And if you do decide you want to buy it use my code AVP to get $10 off your purchase price that helps me and it uh, well it certainly helps you because you get $10 off and it's a one-time payment so you own the software there's no subscription model so once you bought it you own it and that's fantastic unlike Lightroom where it is a subscription model now I use both in combination with each other so um, but you can use it standalone because it's got all the editing features that you would ever need uh, you can remove stuff you know you can use remove objects in the images you can do your contrast brightness con you know um, exposure compensation all that kind of thing in Luminar Neo just as the same as you can in uh, Lightroom but if we now just uh, go into um, uh, Luminar Neo so we edit that in Luminar Neo open that up edit it as a TIFF file just let that open up Luminar Neo um, it creates a copy in Lightroom, so it doesn't actually um, affect the original, which is great. I mean, that's a you know, really good feature of Lightroom. You're not going to, if you don't like it, um, no loss. Um, but once Luminar Neo loads, um, you see it's now loaded it in Neo. We go into the edit module. And then it brings up down the right hand side all the different things that you can edit. We, we want to edit the sky, so we want to change the sky. Go into sky selection. 
let's choose oh let's choose that sky i normally would choose a sky that fits the scene you know but we'll choose that sky for sake of argument we can then go to enhance and bring up that image overcook it a bit why not click on apply and then that will take us back to Lightroom um, and when it's back in Lightroom you can do your final adjustments in that um, you know you can do a lot more with it um, there we go now it's back in Lightroom look at that so uh, let's go full screen that's the edited version that's how it was so that's what we've done to it and that's what came out of camera and we brought up all the shadow detail in the building um, and just made that image a lot more interesting. It's not, it's not a great image, particularly per se, but, you know, it just shows what you can do. Within a matter of seconds, if you spent a bit more time on it, you'd get a lot more attractive, you know, a lot more attractive image. Um, but again, a 7 to 14 lens is a great you know from ultra wide to wide and i use it a lot for architecture for photographing inside churches uh cathedrals and all that kind of thing and because it's got a wide aperture of f 2.8 and it's constant uh you can shoot in low light which is always an issue with micro four thirds but with a constant f 2.8 aperture then you really don't have that issue you know it's really really good so yeah and paired with my olympus omd em1 mark iii it makes a nice, you know, a nice combination. Combination, as I say, I will put in the description the weight of this lens. Um, but you know, that balances quite nicely. I don't really have an issue with, you know, with the balancing of how that lens is. Um, now, the lens optics is designed in eleven groups. I don't know how many elements is it. Um, yeah, uh, fourteen elements in eleven groups. So there's a lot of glass inside this lens. A lot of glass. Fourteen elements in eleven groups. You know, that's uh, that's quite a quite a lot in a very compact lens. Um, but yeah, yeah, great piece of kit. And I say because it's micro four thirds, it will uh, fit on any micro four thirds body. Um, but uh, yeah, highly recommended particularly you know if you're into landscapes and architecture and you do like the wide angled look um, which i know i do and that's why i purchased it um, it's a you know a great alternative to some of the other 7 to 14 lenses or the 8 to is it the 8 to 18 the leica 8 to 18 um you know i think that um works well and because i've got it on olympus body it looks great and it pairs really well with the olympus body so there we go that's the Olympus 7 to 14 Pro f2.8 lens. Hope you found that interesting. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you haven't already done so. And you like the content of this particular video. Leave any comments in the comments section. Particularly if you own the 7 to 14. I'd be very interested to know what you think and what you pair it with. Whether it be an Olympus body, Blackmagic, Panasonic or whatever. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. And stay tuned for more videos relating to video photography, audio and podcasting. Cheers for now. Bye.